Welcome back to In Depth. We are talking about the contentious relationship, at least perception wise, inside the Evansville Police Department. I'm joined tonight by Evansville Police Chief Billy Bolin and FOP President Sergeant DJ Thompson. Bad blood. I, I've now, this is my third uh, conversation with both of you, the first time I've had both of you together. But correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not trying to be maudlin or naive, but just uh, talking to both of you independently and here, it doesn't seem like bad blood would be a fair uh, perception of the relationship between you two. Am I barking up the wrong tree? Or? I, I think Chief might have a different perception of it. But no, I, I, I have... It, I'm not the one on the end of the of the vote as he is. I have no ill will toward the chief at all. As a matter of fact, I, I've I've said many a times. I think every interview I've done that he's he's a great man. Does a lot of great stuff for the community. It's just the the part that I deal with him with is the leadership of the police department. Chief, you were on the. Uh, I mean, that's pretty. It's pretty tough to get uh, a shellacking publicly like that. Um, where do you go from here? I, I'm seeing two men here, two ranking officers of the Evansville Police Department carrying on a conversation. How many conversations like this have you had with the FOP? You know, FOP is every officer we have, so I have conversations every day. Um, DJ and I, that, back to your main question, we see things differently a lot, but I don't think, I wouldn't call it bad blood. Um, we argue, but... I, I don't know that we've ever raised our voices at each other. I mean, we at one time. So I don't even remember the time. But so we disagree. But we've got the same end goal in mind. And I've known from the day I started the Evansville Police Department, every chief I've ever worked for, the FOP leadership, and it's been different leadership over the years, has told me it's the worst chief we've ever had. Morale's been the lowest it's ever been. And then you get a new chief, and it's the worst chief, and it's the lowest morale. And I will promise you that whoever follows me, you're going to hear at some point that they're the worst chief and it's the lowest morale. That's what they do. It's what I came into eight years ago. That's what I've dealt with for eight years behind the scenes. So as I said the first time, this wasn't a shock to me. It's what I've been dealing with before I ever made a decision. So it's kind of the norm in our profession. And I had a good friend in the banking industry just said to me earlier today, I couldn't imagine in our world us being able to take a vote on whether we like the CEO of our bank or not. It, it, most businesses don't get to do that, and I would imagine most businesses would have issues with the person at the top. Okay, with that said, uh, Sergeant Thompson, uh, you can take this first. Um, here we are. Uh, both of you are, what, 20 to 25-year veterans uh, of uh, law enforcement? I have 30, yes. 30, 24. Okay, 24, okay. Well, here we are, many years later, sitting here, and we do have a police department, at least perception-wise, that the public is seeing, not just on social media, but there's been some strong comments made. Where do we go from here? So how is this going to be healed within the department if it could potentially affect an officer's ability to keep people safe? I'll give that one to you first. Um, I don't think the, <clears throat> the vote that we had has anything to do with keeping the community safe. I think we're doing, uh, we have very, very dedicated officers. We have, I mean, by officers, I mean our detectives, our administration, our, our motor patrol guys. They're, I think this is very important to them, but at the same time, they have a job. They're doing this job because the, the vast majority of them really love doing this job. And I, I think an argument between the chief and I, or the FOP and the chief, or anyone else, is not going to affect the quality of the work that our officers do. Would it be more productive, though? And I suppose the view of this could have just stayed inside one office uh, there at the Civic Center instead of this. I mean, the minute that news release came out, okay? On both sides, uh, those people who supported the chief, those people who are supporting the FOP, it was a flood of comment on social media. People were talking about it. It was dominating our newscast, not only here but elsewhere. What's the best way to go about this? I mean, this this is his is a historic vote, Chief. You may have voted like that 20 years ago if it, if you had had I pressure. I have no doubt I would have. If you had had pressure on that, so where do we go from here? You know, I, th I think we continue working together. We've already had a, a pre-scheduled labor management meeting just the other day. Um, it was very cordial. Um, nothing has changed as far as my relationship with him. I told him the day he became president, my door is always open. Uh, afternoons are typically easier to catch me, and he, he's done it before. He knows he can walk in. Um, we may not always agree 
on the conversations we have, but I'm open. And if it's something we can jointly do to benefit our officers, to benefit the public, I'm extremely open to that. I, I think you would have to admit I've said yes to your request more than I've said no. There's issues that we disagree on, but I say yes quite a bit. Fair share. So, I mean, it's not that I'm just refusing to listen. It's just sometimes labor and management are going to disagree about how you go about something, and that's it. Not to steal your word, but in your press conference, you said it's petty disagreements. We've got petty disagreements, and it's became public. Do I wish it was public? No, I, I don't. I'll ask a question, and both very quickly. I've got my, my enemy is the clock here. Would a private meeting between you two, without the glare of these TV lights or a, a television news anchor talking to you, would that type of a meeting now, after all this has happened, let the dust settle, do you feel there will be progress made to, to basically, basically soothe the wounds that have taken place inside that department? You want to go first? I, I think it will be just like it's all, I, I, like I said, I've been open. I'm still going to be open. I'm going to be professional. I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to be nice. And I'll continue doing those things. Do you think there's some room for improvement in that? And, and oh, I think it, there's a lot of room for improvement. On definitely. both sides? Or? Um, Maybe on both sides. I know my, I had been asked earlier, uh, pretty much the same question, said my goal would be to take this vote a year from now and the numbers to be flipped. There, there'd be nothing more I would like than that, than that everything is going well and that we have uh, just complete confidence in the leadership of our department. All right. Sergeant Thompson, thank you. Chief Bullen, thank, thank you, you for being here thank tonight. You. I know it's been a tough month. And